Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and today I'm going to show you how you can create your own search screens in Visual Studio Light Switch. By default, Light Switch provides a search screen template as well as search-enabled grids on all your screens that allow you to easily search across all string fields on your records. However, sometimes we want to present a specific filter to the user instead of using the built-in search. For instance, maybe you want to allow searching on non-string fields or multiple fields at once. Or maybe we want to filter child records by their related parent, like if we have a product table that we want to filter based on categories to which they belong. I already have a data model here that we've been using in this video series. It's a simple order management system that allows us to work with customers, products, and their orders. I've already entered some data into these tables as well from some previous videos. So first let's quickly cr demonstrate what we get out of the box when it comes to search. So let's create a search screen. We'll right click on screens, add a screen, and I'm just going to select this search data screen and I'm going to choose our customers. Click OK. Alright, so let's just run this to see what we get. I'm going to hit F5. Okay, so here's all our customers displayed on the screen. If I had uh, more than th this amount of data here, if I had more than 45 rows actually by default are displayed, um, it would enable this paging down here at the bottom. So we're only pulling up 45 rows each time. But we, when we search, it will search across all the data in the table on, in the database. So now the search here is just the by default will search across all string fields. And if you watch some previous videos, you'll know how to create a search screen just like this. So if I type, say, for instance, MA, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up both Massey for the last name here and Max on first name. Okay, so let's see how we can create a custom search screen that searches only on specific fields. Okay, so let's delete this default search screen here because what we're going to do is we're going to first create a query. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click on our customer table there and say add query. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this uh, customer search. And I think what I'm going to do is I want to add a specific filter. Um, let's provide a search criteria on uh, the gender of our customers. Okay, so I'm going to say where okay their gender okay is equal to, and we're going to make this a parameter. And I just need to create a new parameter. Okay, so. What this sets up now, we're going to start building a custom search and I'll add some more clauses later. But let's just start here where uh, the gender is equal to either male or female. Now, save it and then we'll right click on screens again or we can go up here and just click add screen. And now this time we'll say we'll create the search data screen but we'll create it off of our own customer search query. Now notice when we create this screen, LightSwitch sees that there's a required parameter as gender, but it's generating it as a text box. And so the user would just type M or F or anything else, honestly. It's not, it's not, uh, we're not restricting what they type in there, but on, uh, the gender is only stored as a male or female, an M or an F in the database. And so what we really want to do is this parameter that it's created, okay, that feeds our query, we want to limit the choices down to male or female. And you can do that here with uh, string parameters by going into the properties and just setting the choice list. Okay, so I'm going to set the choice list here, F for female, and this way it'll look better on the screen, M for male. Okay, and you can do this with any uh, restricted set of values you want to present to the user. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit a 5 and see what our search screen looks like now. Okay, because this is a required parameter, you'll notice that nothing has come up on the screen. So it's not until we choose whether we want to see all the females or males in the system. Okay, so there's one female I've got in there and a couple males. Okay, and the people that don't have anything specified aren't showing up because this is a required parameter. Okay, so that's one way you can provide a simple choice list um, to feed a parameter into a query. Now let's see how we can build out some more um, non-string fields and search across those.
So let's go ahead up to our uh, customers table and change the data model a little bit. What I want to do is I'm going to add a new property here called birth date. Okay, and it's going to be just a date and we won't make it required. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to add, um, basically allow the user to choose a range of birthdays to show. So I only want to pull up customers that fall, their birthday falls within a specific range. So let's see what we could do. Um, let's go ahead and save that. And uh, one thing I need to do is I need to enter some data because it's a new field. I need to put these uh, birth dates on some of our customers. So let's go ahead and just add a new screen real quick to modify some of this data. I'll just make it an editable grid screen for our customers. Click OK. Okay, let's just run it real quick and I'll fill out some of the data for our birth dates. Okay, so open the grid. Here's all of our customers. Their birth date is at the end here. Let's just start filling out some stuff. So we'll make Joe, I don't actually know a lot of these birth dates. <laughs> so let's just go uh, one, you know, 10. He's probably younger than me. So uh, we'll make him 1982. Uh, let's just do. Okay. Uh, I, this is me, so I know my birth date. Okay, that's good enough. So let's go ahead and save those guys. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close our app. Now that we have some data in there, now we can see if a query works. So let's go back into the query that we created here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a date range, okay, so we can specify this range. So I'm going to do first, I'm going to make this the gender parameter optional, so it's not required, okay, and then I'm going to add another filter here uh, where we select the birth date, there it is, okay, and we'll make this inclusive, okay, so it's going to end up being um, uh, greater than or equal to, and we just need a new parameter here. Okay, so the birth date range greater than equal to the, and we'll call this birth date start. Okay, all right, and the birth date here is less than or equal to a new parameter, new, and we'll call this birth date end. Okay, we're also going to make these optional as well. Okay. All right, cool. So now save that. And what we could do is just go back over to our search screen because we're customizing it. We just added a couple more of those parameters. We just need to basically um, take this uh, parameter here and drag it onto the screen. There's the start date. It'll automatically create a, um, a field for us here on the on the screen, backing field. All right, and it'll hook it automatically up to the gender. So now I just need to do that, or sorry, into the birth date start. And here's the birth date end. Okay, so just drag it over there. Okay, cool. So now we've got all of these parameters set up on our screen. So let's hit F5 and see what we get now. Okay, so notice because all of the parameters were optional, the query actually executes and pulls up all of our customers like normal. Okay, and because they're optional, what I, what I can do is fill out any one of these. Okay, so for instance, let's say the birth date start uh, 1, 1, uh, let's see, 65. Okay, notice that it executes and it actually pulls up all the people that are after 65. Now, the thing is, is maybe I want a range, right? So 1, one uh, seventy. Let's eliminate Joe out of this, right? So seventy-two. That would be me. Okay, um, or Jane. It would have been Jane. Uh, and so what ends up happening here is that every time you sp 
uh, specify a query parameter, it executes again and again. Okay, so that might be what you want, but if your queries are very complex or you have a lot of data, um, then you might want to uh, make to make it more efficient. You might want to have the user specify all the criteria criteria first and then execute the query. So let's see how we can do that instead. And this will make your queries that are more complex uh, a lot more performant. So let's see how we can do that. So the first thing we do is we select the actual search here on the left hand side of our screen and we'll go to the properties and you'll notice that there's this checkbox here, auto execute query. Well, we're going to uncheck that. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to provide a couple buttons on the screen that allow the user to uh, either execute the search or clear the search criteria because you usually have a clear filter kind of button too on a search screen. So in order to create some buttons what I'll do is I'll just create them right underneath the last piece of search criteria here. I'll just add a new button. So I just right click, add a new button and let's just call this search. Okay and we'll go ahead and add another button called clear filter. Okay, so now we just need to write a couple lines of code to uh, to write uh, to execute the search um, when they click the search button. So right click on it, edit execute code. This is actually going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be me dot customer search. That's that's the search uh, the collection there of the uh, customers that come back from the query. Okay, and we're just going to have to tell this query to load. Okay, now with the other button, okay, so go back over here with this guy, right click, edit, execute code. What we'll want to do is we'll want to clear out the first clear out all the search criteria and then reload and then reload. Okay, so let's do this. Me dot uh, our first search criteria is a gender, customer gender, um, and then we'll just say uh, sorry, equals nothing, okay, or null me dot uh let's see birth date end nothing me dot uh birth date uh start nothing and because they're all um optional parameters when we call load with no parameters specified it will it's going to bring back all of our customers or at least a page of them okay um so we'll just say customer search dot load Okay. Now, well, I should mention the how you control paging on this is you go back over to your query here and you'll see there's the number of items to display per the page. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit F5 to run this and now let's see what we've got. Okay, so you'll notice nothing comes up, no query is executed. Let's go ahead and let's not let's not do the gender. Well, actually, let's go ahead and specify all the uh, females and whose birth date starts with one, you know, begin date one one um, 1960 to, and I'll, let's include me this time. My birthday is, you know, ten. We'll include it here. Okay, so now notice nothing nothing executed until we filled all that stuff out. So now when we click search, that's when the query returns. And there I am, okay, females and the, my birthday falls within this range. Okay, and we, when we click clear filter though, that's going to clear out all of the stuff and now it's going to bring back all of the records back. Cool. All right, so now let's see how we can create a search screen that search it, that filters based on parent records, okay, so on a relation instead of on specific um, fields within uh, the table itself. Okay, so to order in order to demonstrate this, uh, let's take a look at our products data model here. What I'm going to do is I want to add a category parent so each product uh, ha uh, has a category and then what we'll do is we'll create a search screen that allows the user to select the category and then all the products in that category are displayed. Okay so in order to do this we'll just add a new table called category. Okay and it just has a name. Make it really simple. Alright and then I'm going to add the relationship to product. Okay so we'll select product here uh, but I need to switch this around. Okay, so many products have um, one. Actually, we want zero or one uh, because I have some data in my product table already, and I'm going to add and it's optional whether or not the product belongs in the category. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, save that. 
Okay, so now what we need to do is we'll need to create a query for our products. Okay, so let's go over to product here and we can just click query. And what I'm going to do is call this products, uh, products by category. Okay, and this time we'll add a filter and this time we'll see where the category ID okay is equal to all right we'll go ahead and make it equal the ID is equal to a new parameter okay there we go so now I could make this optional or required for this case let's make it required okay so um, let's go ahead and save that and now what we can do is create a new screen okay a search data screen we're gonna make the search data screen here the products by category Okay, now notice when we uh, do this, we get the same um, same experience we had before, right? We've just got this parameter being fed into this query, and it's just a, an ID parameter. Um, so what we need to do is we need to have the user specify this ID. Now, unfortunately, that's not very intuitive. Most time, users don't know the I internal IDs of records in the system. And so what we really want to do is we want to provide a drop down of the categories, right? So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we add a data item to the screen, and we'll make this a local property. And the property type is actually going to be a category, OK? And I'm going to call this selected category. hit OK. OK, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this generated uh, property here, all of screen property, and instead what I'm going to do is make this selected property or a selected category and move it like right up above the grid. And then what we need to do is we just need to hook these two guys together. So the query parameter, this ID, the parameter binding is actually going to be the selected categories ID. OK, so that's how we're going to get a drop down up at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and hit F5 and uh, see, what's, see what we get. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to associate some products with our categories. So let's go ahead and add a couple screens for that. We'll add an editable grid screen for our categories so we can enter some categories. And then we'll also add one for our products so we can associate them. So um, there we go, and products. OK, so let's go ahead and hit F5, enter some data, and then run our search screen and see what we get. OK, so let's go ahead and, and enter some categories into the system. OK, um, let's do drinks, uh, fruit, and maybe sweets. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to go into our products grid here. And notice we have some products. Now I'll select some categories. So apple is fruit, oranges are fruit, Oreos are sweets, and Red Bull is a drink. All right. Okay, cool. So now that we have that association. And let's go ahead and run our search screen. So there's our search selected category. And now all we need to do is we'll see the categories and let's say all the fruit. And there's the oranges and apples. So that's how you can create your own custom search screens in a variety of ways and how you can control how the queries are executed exactly how you want. So thanks for watching.